Nick Boy and I'm here at PAX 2016 with Rooster Teeth's Lindsay and Michael. Guys, thank you very much for coming along. Yeah, thanks for having us. You had RTX here earlier in the year. Uh, you scoping out the competition now? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. That's um, the plan. We're going to take out all these people who are watching right now. Well, don't take out the, the fans. Yeah. We need them oh, to come sorry, to our Are any of you fans? Because I feel, yeah, okay. So Ooh. you can take out the girl in the denim jacket. Noted. Yeah. We're going down after this. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Lindsay, you are doing editing for Achievement Hunter as yeah. well. Um, I've actually moved on to that too. Um, I'm now the supervising producer for Achievement yeah. Hunter, so I'm, I'm this guy's boss now, which is interesting. So have you moved yeah. out of editing completely? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Definitely. Cause I was gonna say, like before you would have been editing Michael. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And like when she cuts out your good stuff. Yeah. Is that brutal? Hey, I'm used to it at this point. Yeah. You know, she really just tries to make me look like shit. Yeah. And she does a great job. Yeah. But I really... I do most of it anyway. The yeah. internet I mean. loves shit. I'm doing you a favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're producing, but you're also now like one of the voices as yeah. well. Like you're one of the talent that's like giving opinions, you're doing voices and that sort of thing. How have you found that transition? It's been very interesting. I mean, going from supervising Achievement Hunter, which is a room full of uh, adult children, for lack of a better term, myself yeah. included, yeah. to voice acting for a series like Ruby, which is now a world renowned series that's being dubbed in Japan. Yeah. It's very interesting it's to go back and forth. Yeah with the success of Ruby, like this is something that you never really, I mean, it's one of the most successful Western animates. Like this is crazy. Yeah, no, no, we never thought it would be this successful. We were honestly worried about our fan base liking it to have not only our fan base say, hey, this is fantastic, but now all these uh, Eastern production companies saying, oh wow, this is a wonderful production. It's so surreal. Yeah. We never ever expected this kind of success. And then you guys spun off Achievement Hunter and Let's Play uh, from the main channel. What was the thing behind that? Like, what what philosophy wise makes you guys different than the core Rooster Teeth? Um, I think just especially Achievement Hunter and Let's Play, we do all gameplay content, you know, and and with Rooster Teeth getting bigger and bigger and having productions like Ruby and you know like animation alone, you know, Cam Camp and all the other animated shows we do. Um, along with the you know Rooster Teeth podcast and the animated adventures and everything, there's just so much content. We tried, we wanted to kind of just like separate a little bit to yeah. give people uh, an easier way to just watch what you like. You know what I mean? So it's it's why we have like the whole network of you know we have Achievement Hunter and Let's Play, and then you go further than that. You know now under the Rooster Teeth network we have guys like Funhouse and Game Attack and Cow Chop and all these other great groups. So we really just tried to give the audience a kind of simplified version of if you want gameplay, you can come here. If you want, you know, live action stuff, you can kind of go here. Yeah. And how are you finding, like, handling the responsibility? Because as it grows, it's just getting bigger and bigger. You're not just, you're getting way more people watching, but you're doing these live shows, you're making films. Like, do you, do you stop and crack under the pressure occasionally or or is that like your job and you're just kind of like you just chill i'm the stressor he's the one who's just very breaking stuff that's yeah. his responsibility yeah it's it's there's times where we have to step back and go wow how did we even get here and you know never in my life did i think people want our autograph or to hang out with us but people are here to see us at this convention alone and yeah it's very very humbling i think the the pressure and the stress comes in between. Yep. Like, and fortunately, there's no time. There's never an in between. So, so, it's like, so as long as you keep, as long as I'm doing something, yeah, you know, like this. Yeah, I woke up today. I'm like, I guess we're doing an inter interview today. You know, I didn't really have time to process it. Just do this and then this Sit and then the this and then this. Go. Yeah, so it, beanbag, it's you like know? you just you did the movie because it was like we need to do something so that I don't freak out about all the stuff we're doing. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it just continues. Yeah. 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 They're like security blankets of content. It's like I oh, just make something here. Here, calm down. That was uh, Gavin, you know, yeah. for Slow Mo Guys and, and all that jazz. The first day we got on the set of the film, I mean, it was such a huge production that, you know, I'd never been a part of something like that. And Gavin, who used to shoot, you know, Hollywood movies, yeah. clearly he got, he was like, oh, this is a real movie. Yeah, you know, he just he like there, understood the dynamic. Exactly. Going and then we got to the set and we were watching, you know, they were filming other scenes and stuff. They were doing like the intro of the film. And I was like, this is a. Uh, this is the real deal. Yeah, and, this is not a camera yeah. in the office. Yeah, Gavin, Gavin looked at me and he said, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> and then we were just like, don't think about it, you know, just make the movie. And, you know, a couple, you know, a week or two in, you know, it was just we, we, we met the crew and we really kind of bonded with them. And it just became a giant Rooster Teeth production, you know. And the, I mean, the good thing about that kind of production is that you find that you are surrounded by professionals. Yeah. And so, like, when professionals come in, then it's kind of like, oh, I actually 
probably need to do a bit less because like I feel like I'm in good hands. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, that was and actually one of the best parts about Laser Team is there was so many professional film crew from Austin that didn't work for Rooster Teeth that worked on the film yeah. that we hired many of those people after Laser Team and they now work at Rooster Teeth oh, full really? time. Yeah, and the production value alone, like a guy Marcus Lepore, he was the um, art director on Laser Team and now he's the art director at Rooster Teeth. And he's the mastermind behind all the new podcast sets, all of the immersion sets. Because the like, revamp of the podcast stuff, yeah, I mean, and it's that's all Marcus. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. ridiculous. That's all him, maybe. Right, and okay. Him and his team, yes. That is, that's so cool that you managed to like make those connections. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. uh, and like, so you've obviously got all this stuff going on, huge amount of pressure and stuff, but like, what's been the worst thing that's happened? I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> it's almost like you're on holiday and I'm like, oh, remember all this stuff. Uh, but like, what's been the worst thing that's happened? Uh, like in terms of like the biggest screw up when it comes to making an episode or like was there a moment where you just went oh my god everything is falling apart I feel like for us for a team hunter that's part of our charm we take a, a fuck yeah, up right. for lack of a better term yeah. and we're like you know okay let's roll with that and make it part of our content so yeah. I mean perfect example we just had a, a million and a half video view now with a, a, a video that's just Jeremy one of our co-workers breaking someone's desk and we didn't it, expect that to happen it kicked Gavin's desk in half yes. yeah yeah and, and uh, so the, the real fuck up would be if he didn't kick it in half it would exactly. be if we didn't yeah. film it yeah yeah, 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 that, 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 yeah a camera was not rolling exactly. is the biggest <laughs> The biggest yeah, issue is we didn't film it or we lost the footage. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, really cool. we fortunately have the have the advantage of I just put it out. You Are know? you filming most of the time? Yeah. Are you just rolling just in case? Yeah. yeah. I, Evan's great about that. He always has his phone out. Yeah, right. It's yeah. like if there's a hint, a whisper of yeah. something that's about to happen, I turn and he just got his phone out. <laughs> yeah, right. That's that's the advantage, you know. We film so much yeah. like smaller stuff. Obviously not the big productions like shorts and laser team stuff like that, but we have such a good connection with the audience where, you know, they, they feel like we're just like their friends. You know, they watch a, a bunch of idiots play video games and break stuff. Yeah. Where we have the advantage of just being a lot looser with productions and stuff. We turn lights on, take our phones out. Yeah, totally. You know, and that's how we film, I'd say, half or more than half of our Achievement Hunter, at least, our live action stuff. Yeah. It's just, somebody's doing something dumb. Again, that was the desk kick video. Jeremy's like, I want to kick the desk. And Gavin says, all right, we're going to film it, though. Yeah. You know, just in case. <laughs> just in case. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, you've got a bunch of fans, and I, I reached out. Uh, I reached out to see if they had any questions. So I've got some here. Uh, the first one comes from Bad Luck Kitty, who wants to know: Laser Team Two. What is it? When is it? And I think she also wants to be in it. Uh, what is it? It's a movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a movie that is happening. Yep. Um, I don't know anything about it. That's, I'm hoping I'm still in it. You would hope so. Yeah, and uh, uh, I have no authority whatsoever, but she can totally be in it. I Definitely. think, yeah. I'm just saying yes. Yes. I say yes. Just tell Matt Hollum I said you can be in the movie. And the the only problem is if you're not in the movie, I feel like the authority is lessened. That's, that's true. Yeah. It's a risk you take. Can we get a producer on board saying yes say, as well? I feel like if you're not in the movie, you should have writing credit at least. We'll just siphon you over to make you part of the script now. Yeah. See, yeah. This, okay. we'll this, make is a, this is a producer. I have the authority. Yeah. 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 Okay. Bernie, I said so. All right, well done, Kitty. Uh, second question comes in from uh, Checker Chairs. Uh, the fan response to Ruby and how you're finding season four so far, particularly doing voices. Uh, it's wonderful. I mean, voice acting alone for Ruby has just been a huge adventure for me, but the animation style for volume four has gone above and beyond. The team's really kicking ass. We have a new animation client now, so you're seeing Ruby in a totally new way uh, yeah. as opposed to the previous three volumes. And I can't spoil anything that's gonna happen in the show, but I don't think anyone's gonna expect what is going to happen, that's all I'll say. And have you enjoyed doing the voices now? Oh, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, it's great when people meet me, too. My voice is very, very low like this. Yeah. And they say, oh, you voice Ruby. Are you sure? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of chill when I meet my normal self. Awesome. Uh, Captain Quokka. So Quokka is like an uh, is the thing with the little cape on there. Okay. It's like a weird little animal that we have here. Uh, you've accomplished so much with Bruce Teeth. Uh, what else would you like to do in the future? Like, what grand plans do you have? People have uh, said they'd like a live-action Ruby movie. Yep. I'm all about that. Yes. Like a live-action Sailor Moon or Death Note. Um, only we play the characters, of course. Of course. Our stipulation. Yeah, the worst thing is when, like, if it's, uh, like, they're kicking out voice actors and bringing out other people. Yeah, 100% it needs <laughs> yeah. to be but you said, guys' I'll, section. I'll here. shrink to be Ruby, too. That's fine. I'll cut yeah. off my legs. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. I don't need them. For the art. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a committed method actor. Awesome. Um, I, I love voice acting. It's, it's something that I've always been interested in ever since I was a kid. I love cartoons. And obviously, when it became a huge aspect of video games, yeah. know, I instantly loved it. Um, and it's something I really never thought I'd pursue. And even working at Rooster Teeth, it really had nothing to do with me getting hired. And then Ruby and like, and my first thing was Red versus Blue. I had two lines in Red yeah. versus Blue. And I was like, wow, you know, this is exciting. 
Um, but now, you know, getting to do Sun in Ruby and with uh, Camp Camp, and I play Max in Camp Camp, it's a ton of fun. I branched out a little bit, I do some voice acting for Funimation, and it's definitely something I would like to do more of. What do, what do you like about it? What draws you to it? I just, I don't know, I, I'm just a sucker for shows like, like I grew up watching Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. I had a, um, even before it was really on television uh, for me, like the channels that I had, I had uh, one of my best friends growing up was Korean and he had all the oh, Japanese nice. uh, yeah. movies. So and I just, just like, hooking you up. Yeah, and, and me being a loud, you know, screaming person, immediately I matched myself with like fighting yeah, totally. moves, you know, yeah. yelling and powering up. So uh, getting to do uh, a show like Fairy Tale, where I get to fight people and yell and scream and like do attacks, it's just, I don't know, there's just something really cool about it. It's just like, you know, hearing the music in your headphones while you're doing the voice, yeah. just, I just get so amped up and it's just it's just so much fun. I love doing it. I figure it's also like less conscious than acting, is what less self-conscious than acting. Like you just, you can really go there with the voice because it's like you can look as ridiculous as you need to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I do. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same here. Uh, and then Tash wants to know, will Lindsay continue her love of eating our national icons yes, while you're uh, here? I have made it a point that I have to eat kangaroo while I'm here. Yep. Our, our handlers know that. Yep. So at one point I will eat the room. Handlers. Good. Yes. Yeah. And I you could probably line up a clocker as well. I feel like oh, that's, yeah, it's basically, yeah, it's like kangaroo life. Okay. So you're fine. Nice. Uh, and then the last one was from me. So, uh, I chatted to Gus and Jeff, uh, Jeff early in the year and Gus last year. Uh, obviously you're part of a huge team, but uh, I wanted to know who your least favorite person you work with is. And, and for context, Jeff popped out and said himself. Oh, what a bitch. And then Gus said, without a hint of hesitation or remorse, Bernie and Brandon. Just straight down the camera, like cold as ice. Got a lot of history. Yeah. Do we just cancel each other out and we say each other? No, don't That's give it. a Jeff okay, answer. Sorry, no, right. Real, real Whoa. answer. You can't be fired, you're a producer. It's true. Yeah. 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 I, know. I can't say anything. Um, um, I'm going to say Trevor. What's that fuck? Yeah, yeah. Trevor, editor. Trevor out there. Yeah, I, I need specific details for Oh, okay. Well, he's always, you know, being tall and lanky, yep. sneaking around. He's very, very schemy. He's a tricky Trevor. That's yeah, what call him. tricky Trevor. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, for, sure. um, for me, probably. Is the problem answer, so many people? Yeah, the problem is I hate so many people yeah. that I work with. Uh, Blaine's up there. You know, he's a real <laughs> douchebag. Um, Aaron Marquis, real piece of shit. Yeah. Um, but John, I probably. John Reisinger. No, John Reisinger. Don't get me shit. started on that. Yeah. On the spot. We don't have time for John. Yeah, no, there's not at all. But if I have to choose one, I'm gonna have to say Gavin. Yeah. It's a love-hate relationship. Yeah. I love him and I hate him. Yeah. I can't get rid of him. I've been sitting next to him for five years. Every show I'm in, Gavin's there. Every movie I'm in, Gavin's there. It's, he just he just won't leave me the fuck alone. It's kind of like you need him to leave, but if he left, you wouldn't know what to do with him. Exactly. Yeah. It's like you a know? Batman Joker relationship. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. 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 You a, need each other. That's yeah, a good analogy. That's great. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you very much, guys, for hanging out. Right, thank you. Good luck with the rest of the show. I hope you have a blast. Thank Cheers. you very much. Appreciate awesome. it. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Cheers. Um, I hate... This is going to sound... Uh, this is gonna sound Don't say myself, because like, it's gonna get like, really weird and dark. I am prob I'm probably my least favorite person. Oh no, don't say I that. I won't watch anything I'm in. Oh. And I haven't since the beginning. But you're in so much. I know. So you don't watch anything. I don't watch a lot of our content.